Hi, my name is Anshuman and I'm one of the co-founders at Scalar Academy. If you're a techie, chances are you would have heard about CAP Theorem. Today we would talk about what C, A and P in CAP Theorem stand for, why it works the way it does, and what does CAP Theorem mean in the modern ecosystem. I was fortunate to see tech at scale at Facebook and was able to design products that served millions of queries per second and billions of users. I'm here to share a few of those learnings with you. If you like the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. All right, so let's first look at why do we even need to learn CAP Theorem. CAP Theorem is one of the most basic principles of uh, distributed storage. So if, if at all you think about building or working on distributed systems in the future, CAP Theorem is a must have, must know. So that's why you need to learn CAP Theorem. Now, before I get into explaining CAP Theorem, and I would try to do that with using as simple example as possible, I want to get give credit to Kaushik, whose uh, blog I have borrowed a few ideas from. Uh, so thank you, Kaushik, for coming up with a very, very innovative example. So let's get to it, right? So to elaborate um, CAP Theorem, I'll, I'll take example of, of a real world example of, of, let's say, you. Imagine I... I'm an entrepreneur. I'm looking for ideas and I feel, you know what, like people need reminders. Let's build a service that just stores reminders, right? Which is, I get this very premium number. Imagine I name my company as ABCD and I get this very premium number, which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. People could just call me on one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and they can tell me what they want to remember. And then when they call me back, I tell them what they wanted to remember and then things work. It seems to me that this is a great idea. So what I do is I set up this line. I, I sit in the office. Imagine this is me. Forgive my drawing. <laughs> um, imagine I sit in the office. Every time somebody tells me, let's say I got a call from X and X says, hey, please remember that I have a flight tomorrow at 9 p.m. I say, great. Next time they call and they ask me, tell me what I wanted you to remember. And then I tell them, you know what, do you have a flight tomorrow at 9 p.m.? And then this seems great. I charge people very nominal amount of money to, to store this information and service takes off. Everybody needs this. There's a big market. Everybody starts using it. And then I start to hit the problem. And you'll notice most systems, they start to hit the problem when they hit scale. Then I realize that I'm getting a lot of calls and I'm not enough to address all of those calls myself. So then I start to think and then I think, sure, let me, let me get my wife also involved. So now this number actually has me and my wife, both of us, both of us sit with our diaries where the call gets routed to either one of us, whoever is free. And when I get a call, I just very quickly, if the person is asking me to take a reminder, I just take down that reminder, right? And when the person calls me back, I respond back to the reminder. Great. I have suddenly now doubled my capacity. If I was able to do take 1000 requests in a day before, now I can take 2000 requests because I have my wife to help me as well. Very soon I got my first unhappy customer. Mr. X calls me one day and says, hey, can you please remind me when is my flight? And I look through my diary and I realize I don't have an entry corresponding to Mr. X. And I tell Mr. X, hey, look, I don't have an entry corresponding to your corresponding to you. Mr. X seems very disappointed, very angry, and then disconnects the call. Now I start to think what might have happened. Either Mr. X was delusional or maybe there was a fault at my end. And then I see that there might have been a problem. It is possible when X, Mr. X wanted to store their reminder, they might have called my wife and my wife would have stored this entry that, hey, X wants a reminder for a flight at 7 p.m. tomorrow. However, that entry is not with me because that call never came to me. However, when X wanted to understand when their flight was, they ended up calling me instead of my wife because they don't know. They only know this number, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I don't have that entry. And this is why X is very unhappy. This is what is called as consistency problem, data consistency problem, which is an end consumer might have stored some data with me which, and when they ask me back, there is no guarantee that they will get the data back because it depends on where the request comes to. If the request comes to my wife, they'll get their data back. If the request comes to me, they'll not get the data back. If my wife's diary has that entry, this is a big problem. If 
not solved, my company will die. So I start to think, I start to think, and I come up with a solution. I say, hey, look, I mean, here is what we could do. When X calls me to say that, please note down that I have a flight tomorrow at, imagine, 6 p.m., I'll note it down in my diary. I'll also tell my wife to note down this entry, which is also that tomorrow, 6 p.m. flight. And only when both of us have written it, the entry in my diary, in their own diaries, then I return success. Then I tell Mr. X, I have noted down your entry. That way, there is guarantee that both of our diaries, my diary and my wife's diary, they'll have the exact same entries. Consistency of data. They'll have the exact same entries. And great, my consistency problem is solved. Now, when X calls any one of us, we, we can respond back with the right data points. Things were going great. One day, I again start to face a problem. One day, my wife calls in sick. She's not keeping well, so she's not in the office. What that means is that my wife, for the time being, is gone. For a day, is gone. And at that very moment, this another gentleman, Y, calls me and tells me to note down an entry. I say, okay, sure, what's your entry? And they tell me, you know what, I have a flight tomorrow at 3 p.m. I say, great, let me note it down. Let me, by the way, also go and tell my wife to note it down. Oh, by the way, my wife is not here. She can't note it down. And therefore, I'll have to tell why that, hey, I can't note down your request. Your request actually has failed, which means for the entire day, I can't take in any new requests. That is a availability problem which is my system is not available to take all kind of right requests. In the case of software systems, for example, like Facebook, you could think of Facebook saying that for an entire day or for an hour or for a few minutes, you can't make any new posts or you can't post any new photos on, on Facebook. That is a, an availability problem. So again, I'm very stressed. What do I do? I don't want my business to fail. So I think and think and think, and I come up with another solution. I say, you know what? When my wife is not here, so I have my diary and imagine my wife is not here. So I have written a bunch of entries. This new day comes, whatever entries I get, Mr. X says to note down something, I'll note it down. When Mr. Y says to note down something, I'll note it down. And when my wife returns back, because I want both of our diaries to be identical, I tell her, look, you'll not take up any phone calls till you have noted down all of the additional entries that I made in the previous day. Or if she was gone for last two days, then in the previous two days. So you first note down all of the additional entries and then you start taking calls. And then my problem is solved. Now, because if, if X calls me and says that, please note down that I have a flight tomorrow at 8 p.m. Even if my wife is not in the office, I can still note down the entry and therefore I'm still available. Since my wife will come back and she'll, she will actually catch up with whatever new entries are there in my diaries before answering any phone call. So we're also consistent, which is great. Things are going super good. And then comes another problem. One day, me and my wife, we both have fight and we stop talking to each other. So imagine I get a phone call, X says, hey, look, please note down, I have a flight tomorrow at 9 p.m. I can't note it down because I'm not able to talk to my wife. And if, if I note it down, then and say, tell X that, hey, look, I have noted down your entry, then my system becomes inconsistent, right? Because my diary has now different entries, my wife has different entries and she's still taking calls. So when this network partition happens, when this network partition happens where I'm not able to talk to my wife or other systems, then I have to make a choice. Do I want to stay consistent or do I want to stay available? If I want to stay consistent, then if Mr. X calls me and says, please note down the entry, I will have to say, sorry, I can't. My system is down. It's not accepting any new right requests. If I want to stay available, then I can take down the entry, but then I become inconsistent. So I, if I choose consistency, then I become unavailable. If I choose availability, then I become inconsistent. And that is exactly the CAPS theorem. CAPS theorem says that if you have consistency, if you have availability, and if you have partition tolerance, then at a time you can only guarantee two out of these. You can't promise all three at the same time, which means when this network partition happens, I would have to choose between consistency and availability. I can't have both. That's the gap theorem. Now I have two bonuses to add here. Most systems that are 
available and partition tolerant, which is called AP. A for availability, P for partitioning, C for consistency. Right? Most systems that are AP can still make sure that they become eventually consistent. What does that mean? That means eventually my and my wife's diary, they have same entries. How do I make sure of that? Whenever we start talking again, we can exchange notes. Think, I mean, or maybe just imagine that there's a clerk here that I've hired who just takes up all of the new entries in the last one hour, tells me what those entries were. So I take those down. Also, by the way, ask me what were the entries that I made in the last one hour, goes back to my wife and tells, here are the new entries that were made in the last one hour. So there might be periods in between that I was inconsistent, but eventually we become consistent. So that is eventually consistency. There is one more um, extension to CAP theorem that was done very recently, actually not very recently, about 10 years back, um, which is called as PACELC theorem. And what this theorem states is that hey, look, when network partition happens, when my systems can't talk to each other, then sure, you have to choose between availability or consistency. You can't have both. However, there are going to be cases when my systems can talk to each other, which means there is there is no network partition, which is else. So else, I have to choose between latency or consistency. I can't have both. If you notice, when I made this decision that to stay consistent, I will make sure that on every single call, I will make sure my wife also notes down the entry and only then I return success then I'm actually waiting for my wife to note down that entry. My wife could be doing something else at that time. My wife could be answering some other call. And in that case, it, the entire request might end up taking a lot of time. So the latency could become high because I want consistency. However, if I was willing to let go of consistency, which is I wanted to say that, hey, look, I'll just note it down. And maybe I mean, my, my wife could probably catch up later on. Then latency could stay really low. So then you would actually have a balance between latency and consistency when there is no network partition. So that's what base LC theorem is, which is just an extension to the cap theorem because cap theorem does not talk about latency. I hope that made sense to you and I hope that was helpful. This cap theorem is one of the most basic and one of the most useful theorems you'll come across when designing distributed systems. I'll keep doing more videos like this. If you like this video, please like the current video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Thank you so much.